the New York Giants Sports Talk and Entertainment. Thought I would break out the old intro. Why? Why not? Let's talk about the New York football giants today. Uh, oh, you know, we got some injury news with one of our major signings. Well, not a, I don't call him a major signing, but Kyle Rudolph evidently did not pass his physical. And he's got some kind of foot issue that it looks like it may require surgery. We don't know how um, we don't know how bad it is yet, but it looks like his signing right now is what I would refer to in jeopardy. And I'm not going to take TV shows for 100, Alex. Um, it's interesting. And you know what? And I find it's just one of those things that you never know. And they, this is the, what I have been trying to extol to Pers- uh, to everyone in Giants Nation. You don't know. You don't know with these signings. You don't know with the draft. You just don't know. You have to build contingency plans. So if things like this do crop up, that you are not surprised. And right now, I mean, I think a lot of people were surprised that he failed his physical. Now, did I think the Vikings who released him, of course, on March 2nd knew something about the injury? No, I don't think so. Do I think Kyle, uh, do I think that uh, I think Kyle Rudolph tried to hide the injury? No, I don't think so. I just think it's just, you know, it, it's just one of the, it's just one of those things. It's just one of those things that happens. So we, we really do have to monitor this situation. Now, as we monitor the situation, I, I do find something in, interesting. Uh, evidently, Giants sent a whole bunch of people down to, uh, to Alabama to the pro day. And it's it's everyone's like you, you go in the Twitter sphere. And I know I know I should stay off Twitter. I know. And they're all like, oh, the Giants sent down the contingency to Alabama so they can take a look at the wide receiver. So they, they can they could see what he is because they're going to draft him now, even though we just went out and signed Kenny Galladay. No, they sent down their contingency because they're going to send their contingency down to every major player that they think is going to be in the t- that could potentially fall to them in the top 11. That's all they did. And then, again, they are being smart. Same with the. Kyle Rudolph situation. They are being, you know, that's why you have a physical because you are being smart. You are checking out what could possibly happen. Now I laugh because, and I, and I, again, I was on big Pat's talking sports the other day and we're doing a, we're doing a weekly show on Mondays at 9 PM Eastern standard time. Another, another shameless plug. And I was talking the fact that I would not still be surprised if the giants went wide receiver or potential, or potentially Kyle Pitts if he was available. Now, follow my logic here for a second. Yes, we need a pass rush, and 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 in the same vein, in some ways, we need a offensive lineman. We need a plethora of offensive linemen. But let's say one of the big weapons. It doesn't matter who it is. Let's say one of the big weapons falls to us at eleven. Does Gellman trade back to get the assets? Do we turn around and select a reach for an offensive lineman or go with Gregory Rousseau, who I like exponentially? What do we do? I'm telling you right now, if that weapon is still there, I kind of feel like you still have to think about taking it. And again, I don't know who would be, but I, it could be one of the wide right receivers. It could be Kyle Pitts. But if they are there at eleven, you have to, you have to, you have to give it, a, you have to give it a thought. Why do you have to give it a thought? Because in this league, yes, you need offensive linemen, you need defensive linemen. To me, that is what pushes the cornerstone of your offense, your defense. But here's here, here's my here's my logic. If you have a multitude of weapons, there is no way. The defense can then stack the box. They can't put seven in the box. Let's say you trot. Let's say it's Waddle. Let's just say for sake, it's Waddle. So let's say you trot out. You trot out Kenny. You trot out, you know, Darius Slayton. You trot out, uh, you know, Evan Ingram. You you then bring out Sterling Shepard. And then you got, you know, you got Saquon Barkley. And then you also have Waddle on the field. I know that's not going to happen. I'm just saying, let's say you put all that talent on the field. What's the first thing they what's the first thing a defense is going to do? Are they going to rush the passer? Are they going to waste that extra man trying to get to Daniel Jones or are they going to drop more men in coverage? 
the first thing that they're going to do is drop more guys in coverage. So going with multitudes of offensive weapons, if you do not have a quality offensive line and you go with a quick passing offense, can be a benefit to your team and help your offensive line look good. Eli Manning played behind some horrid offensive lines, even early in his career. But he had the ability, especially later in his career, to get the ball out quickly, which made him, which allowed bad offensive lines not to have the multitudes of sacks on that stat sheet. So here's the thing. If you have a multitude of weapons on the field at a, at a, at a set time or any time, the defense will have to commit to covering those weapons. They, they could potentially even leave a guy open if they don't. And if you have all this offensive talent on the field, what are you going to do? Are you going to try to rush, rush Daniel Jones and go one-on-one with Kenny or Waddle or Ingram? Someone's going to be open. Or Saquon Barkley out of the backfield? Or run a little play action? Or run a draw? What are you going to do? You're not going to commit to the rush. So it would behoove the Giants to still send contingencies in reference to something happens to Kenny, if something happens to one of the wide receivers, that we still go out and look at these other guys. That would make that that makes sense. That makes football sense. What didn't make football sense to me, and again, I know I should stay off Twitter. I saw a post, and, and this just kind of bugged me. Somebody was telling someone was posting how good. Daniel Jones is or how better Daniel Jones is to Eli Manning from year one to year two. And normally I don't dress, I don't address stupidity because it's just not in my nature, but this was beyond stupidity. They were saying how Daniel Jones was a better quarterback, how he's faster, how he throws the ball deep better, how he does this and that. And I thought to myself, okay, Eli Manning owns every single giant passing record. Eli Manning is in the top 10 of every passing statistic in the NFL. Eli Manning has two Super Bowl rings and two, two Super Bowl rings and two Super Bowl MVPs. Daniel Jones couldn't stay on his feet in the open field with nobody around him. So to compare and Dan, and, and Eli Manning statistically improved greatly from year one to year two. He did not go the other way. So if Daniel Jones is your guy at quarterback, that is 100% fine. Stand by your man. Stand by your man. You can do that. But don't try to compare him to Eli Manning right now. How about Daniel Jones beat a winning team, a team with a winning record? How about he throw more touchdowns than interceptions? How about we just do a couple of those things? How about he just stay healthy and stay on the field? So before you start comparing him to a Giants legend, and that's what Eli Manning is. Eli Manning, if there was a Mount Rushmore of Giant players, he would be on the Mount Rushmore. Not, not even, not even, not even a debate for it. But to compare, say Daniel Jones is a better quarterback from year one to year two, you don't know football. And I, and I, I, I should say who was on Twitter, but I'm not going to. I don't know who they are, and I don't think they're a subscriber. I mean, but who isn't a subscriber? But a lot of people aren't subscribers. Subscribe to the damn channel. I'm going to retire in a year, and I want like 10,000 people before I freaking retire. So if you don't subscribe to the channel, I'm just going to turn it off right now. And as we all know, I'm just kidding. hey oh, Had to throw that in there. Haven't done my morning zoo in a while. I think I should do my morning zoo a little bit. Uh, but you know what? Let's see what happens with Kyle Rudolph. Let's not worry. Let's not think the Giants are doing something because they're sending out a, a, you know, they're sending out their scouts to pro days. That's what they do. They send out scouts to pro days. That's what scouts do. They're going to go to a multitude of pro days. Doesn't mean they're going to select them. I've said it before a million times. It's called misdirection. <laughs> Look at my hand over here. Why am I, my hands doing this over here? That's all it is. I know, we, I, know, I know people want stuff to talk about, but there's plenty to talk about with all the signings and everything's go, uh, everything else going on. So let's be, let's be intelligent with our conversations. I think, that's what, I think that's what we should do. Let's be intelligent about it. Let's, 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 be, let's not be eagle. Let's not be eagle fans. 
Let's be giant fans and let, you know, we see, we see behind the crap. We know what's going on behind the scenes. We know what Dave Gettleman's going to do. Actually, we have no idea what Dave Gettleman's going to do. We got no clue what Gettleman's going to do. He, he is an enigma wrapped in a riddle in one of those Rubik's Cube boxes. We'll never figure him out. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best of New York Jack Sports Talk and Entertainment. And as always, if you can like, please subscribe. If you're not playing, you know what I mean? That'd be awesome.